It's been about three years since I released that video on why you shouldn't buy an expensive body fat scale. And ever since then, I've been on the search, regardless of price point, looking at different functionalities of the best scale on the market for home use. And 42 different companies have either emailed me, actually sent me their products, or I've went out and bought these different scales. Like the Withings Body Fat Scale, for example, I did a video on that, and guess what? I don't have any more because it wasn't good enough. And I'm going to go return this to Best Buy, so I'll see you later because only one scale has remained in my possession. And if you watch that initial video, you'll be happy to know it is still that cheap fit index scale. So for credibility purposes, that's what the three, the 42 were, because if you know someone else that has tested and researched 42 different scales, then by all means, they've got more credibility than I do to come to the conclusion of why this scale is the best. So we got these other facts and figures we're gonna go over just to help justify why I reached this conclusion. So five. 5% error on average of these home scales. If we're not actually getting the accurate measure, then do we really care what that figure is on these scales? Because personally, if you want to go get an actual measurement, you gotta go get a DEXA scan. It's the gold standard for body fat composition because it actually does an X-ray of your body to discern what's body fat, what's water weight, and what's muscle mass. But for home use, we just can't do that. We're not gonna have an X-ray on our home. Even those expensive in-body scales you get at the gym, 2% or more error. So let's look at this for example. For the 5% error of the home body fat scales at 200 pounds, we're talking more or less 10 pounds of body fat that the scale is telling me. The in-body scans at 200 pounds would be about four pounds more or less. So that doesn't really tell me anything. And really, regardless of price point, the limitation of these devices isn't necessarily the R&D and adding the different bells and whistles. It is just the biological impedance analysis and how it works. So for example, when I step on a foot-to-foot -foot BIA scale, it's sending an electrical current up one leg down the other, and it's only gonna be in the lower the half of the body. When you use a handheld one, it only goes through the top part of the body and then there is the more expensive in body where they're trying to aggregate the information from the foot to foot the hand to hand to try to be as accurate as possible and a big effect of what your body fat reading is going to be is genetics and just a whole bunch of other factors like ethnicity and where you actually store fat on your body so for example me I store a lot of fat in my midsection as shown by my DEXA scan. So if anything is going to only measure what's lower, I'm going to get a more biased reading because it's going to take whatever software and algorithms internally and just interpret that more body fat in this midsection, it must be consistent throughout the body. It's just not accurate. So why the hell do we care? The way we use these devices is just for consistent measurements and consistency purposes. So for me, it's just another tool to help me with trend lines. And then the last figures. $30. I would not buy any scale. Like you don't have to buy the Fit Index scale. I actually think this is probably drop shipped and rebranded because who the hell is Fit Index? I would just say that that price point and everything that I've tested, I have not seen the return on investment of what you get in return for that price. There may be some sort of ecosystem that you're in. That's totally up to you. I personally don't think it's necessary. And then 25. This was $25 three years ago, and it's still $25. And that's why I've come to the conclusion, this is still the best scale you should buy.